Right, thank you for joining me for today's press briefing from the North Pole. Now, I'm not going to beat around the bush, I'm going to get straight to the point. This year has been a very difficult year for everyone. I'm sure we can all agree about that. And so it may come as no surprise to realise that this Christmas is also going to be very difficult. And that is why I have made the very difficult decision that this Christmas I will not be doing my usual Christmas present deliveries. Now, I know this is going to come as a massive disappointment to all the small children watching at home. And to those children, I say this. It's a very good idea if you familiarise yourself with the idea of disappointment. Okay? Because as you get older, there's going to be a lot more of it. So get used to it. Now, I haven't taken this decision lightly, you understand. I've been working very hard behind the scenes, trying to make this Christmas as normal as possible. While all the rules and regulations in every single country keep changing every five minutes. There's just too many competing demands. I've had Nicola Sturgeon on the phone saying, I've got to deliver to Scotland first. Because she's only spreading English germs around the place. I've had Mark Drakeford saying, I'm only allowed to deliver presents in Wales if I stay on the roof and drop them down the chimney. So what about all the houses that haven't got chimneys? He said, oh, well, then in that case, you've got to stand in the front garden and deliver them through an open window with a fishing rod. It's ridiculous. I'm not allowed any sherry while I'm there. You can forget it. Forget it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Now, I, I just want to nip this in the bud, first of all. I'm, I'm not cancelling Christmas, OK? But I just want to make one thing clear. I will not be leaving the North Pole. I, I'm not traipsing around all your houses while you're all fast asleep, snoring out your infected aerosols, expecting me to eat your mince pies that you've had your mitts all over. You know, I'm in the vulnerable category. I, I, I'm well over 70. Me BMI isn't what it used to be. Yeah, I'd be putting myself at unnecessary risk going from house to house to house, even if I had a mask on. No matter how much hand sanitizer I use, so I'm not doing it, OK? I'm staying here in self-isolation. And this year, I've decided that I'm going to be allocating Christmas presents in a tier-based system. So I'm sure you're all wondering, what does that mean for you and your family where you live? OK, so to explain that further, if we could have the first slide, please. Santa Claus isn't coming to town. Uh, little, little joke to start with. Uh, next slide, please. Right, so working backwards, those of you who live in tier three, which is the most dangerous tier, you will be receiving no presents. Next slide, please. No, no that's something else. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Moving on to tier two. Those of you who live in tier two, which includes areas where the infection rates aren't quite so bad and inexplicably London, you will all be sent by Royal Mail a one pound coin sellotaped in a Christmas card. Spend it wisely. And lastly, for households who are in Tier 1, which is the Isle of Wight, Cornwall, and the Isles of Scilly, which isn't even on the map, you will be entitled to one present per household. The present must have a financial value of no more than £50, and it will be delivered not by me, but by one of the elves between the 25th and the 31st of December to your local designated present collection point. Now... To find out where your local designated present collection point is, is very easy. All you've got to do is call the helpline and they will give you a code, which you type into the app. That will generate an email with an attachment that contains a QR code. If you print out that QR code and post it to your local council, they will authorise a present request form. Now, that might sound complicated, but trust me, it's really easy. It's going to be world beating. There are some exemptions from this scheme. If you live in tier one, but you are self-employed and you have less than three years worth of tax returns, then bollocks to you. If you live in tier one and you have at any point over the festive period mentioned fairy tale of New York on social media on either side of the argument, then your household will not be eligible for a present. Honestly, I'm sick of hearing about it. If you live in Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland, then you will be eligible for either a £35 Amazon gift voucher or a Lucky Dip mystery package from Debenhams. They've got plenty of stock to clear and they've got some quality items. So now that we've laid out how the present system is going to work, uh, it's time for some questions. So the, the first question comes from Mary Flanagan. Thank you, Father Christmas. Can you talk about the impact this has on the power sharing agreement instalment, uh, especially with regards to the nice and naughty list? Both sides are currently claiming the other side is on the naughty list uh, for various war crimes. Can you comment as to whether that is true? And also, 
Is there even a nice and naughty list this year? Right, well, thank you for that question, Mary. Um, firstly, of course there's going to be a nice list and a naughty list this year. There, there always is. I always do one. I, I don't want people to think that I just, I just make it up in the last couple of days before Christmas. I don't. I do considerable amounts of admin across the whole year, accumulating data to tell me whether or not somebody deserves to be on the naughty list or the nice list. It's not something that I just do overnight, OK? So, so yes, there will be lists and... Uh, and I, I, I know exactly what you're doing with your question. You're trying to get me to, to say who's on the naughty list and who's on the nice list. But I, I have to make this totally clear. There, there are real data protection issues with me even giving slight clues about that. So I will not be drawn on it. The nice list and the naughty list, although they do exist, they won't be used this year to determine who gets what presents. That, that will be determined by the tier scheme that I've already outlined, okay? So I hope that dealt with your question. Uh, right, so uh, the next question comes from Shamsaman. Hello. Who would win in a fight between Smog the Dragon and the Thundercats? Ha! Moving on, the next question is from uh, Eric Rushton. Can I just ask a very simple question, actually, Sansa? What difference would it make if you didn't come this year? When have you ever delivered on Christmas Day? Sure, you've given presents before. I've, I've received plenty of presents from you. But have you actually ever delivered? Let's go back to the past. Christmas 2008. I wanted an Xbox 360. Wake up. What do I get that morning? I get my parents telling me they're getting divorced. Ruined Christmas. Bad timing on their part as well. The following year, Christmas 2009. What do I put on my list? I think you remember. I put that I wanted to be the first boy in school to have pubes. Christmas Day comes along. Unwrap my present. What is it? It's an Xbox 360. That's last year's present, Santa. Christmas 2012. I wanted Becky, who sat next to me in science, to fancy me. Okay. Get back from the Christmas holidays that year. First day back in school. I fart. She smells it, she tells everyone, she never speaks to me again. That one could be on me, to be fair. But my point is, Santa, I've never had a good Christmas. And you've never delivered for me. And there's thousands, if not millions of others that you've never delivered for. So what I want to say is, if you don't come this year, that'd actually be a blessing. I'm not sure there's actually a question in there, but I just wanted to get that off my chest. Right, well... I'm sorry you feel that way, Eric. I, I, I have tried over the years to bring some sense of joy into your life, but, you know, w w when a life is as empty and meaningless as yours is, it's very difficult to have any sort of impact whatsoever. You know, I tried to bring you some happiness. I'm sorry if an Xbox 360 couldn't achieve that. I did try. How about, instead of having a go at me, how about you stop skulking around the house and go out and find yourself a girlfriend? Instead of asking me for one every Christmas. I told you I'm not allowed. It's trafficking. There's rules. Oh, no. I should have packed this in years ago. This is it. I try and bring people presents and happiness. And this is what I met with. This is the lack of appreciation that I get. I don't know why I bother. Right, well, there's just time for one last question. And it comes from Damon Conlon. And uh, he says, there's no such thing as magic. You're not real. I believe in science. Well, thank you very much. What a year 2020's been. What a bloody ending. Merry Christmas. Bah humbug. <laughs>